All right, so the first shot we just gotta have is just something when you're short-sighted. You know, honestly, if this was a little little thinner grass, I even would recommend for a lot of golfers to putt it. But we just gotta have like a super simple kind of go-to shot. You're gonna wanna use your most lofted wedge. Don't need to do much. The biggest difference here is club selection. So with this, again, we wanna land it on the green. We don't wanna try and land on the fringe just because we're gonna avoid that fringe bounce. We want it to get here. And we wanna make sure to read the, read the chip. Too many guys never do this. And then they're like, oh wow, this is right to left or this is downhill. Like walk this off, spend the extra 10, 15 seconds and then get clear about our landing spot. Do not use an eight iron either. That is old outdated tips that's just gonna make it impossible. When you hit an eight iron, that ball is just never gonna stop. Use a gap wedge, pitching wedge at most. And just keep it simple. Bunkers terrified me for a very long time, even as a scratch golfer plus handicap. I've definitely had some issues in the sand, mainly just from not having a good routine, not having the right technique, and then walking in with zero confidence. Also, probably not practicing it nearly enough. It's where you look at. I look right there. That's where I wanted to hit it, not the golf ball. Again, this is the only shot in golf where we don't hit the ball, we hit the sand, which carries it. But I always used to look at the back of the ball, I hit a lot of shots thin. So experiment with it, see what works for you. Stop making the short game so difficult. Today, I'm gonna to share three easy shots that every golfer needs around the greens. When you have all these shots, you can play 99% of shots on the golf course. You're gonna have more confidence. You're gonna avoid some of the most common mistakes and you're probably gonna scramble a lot better. Cause just remember, no matter how good you get, you're gonna miss green. So you gotta have these three basic shots. There's nothing crazy about them, but when you learn how to hit them and you actually apply them on the golf course and you stay consistent and you spend time practicing like we're gonna go through today, you will shoot lower scores fast. Don't forget, Wicked Smart Golf is more than just the mental game. It's about your short game and finding out ways to score even when your long game is off. Let's get into it. All right, so the first shot we just gotta have is just something when you're short-sighted, you know, honestly, if this was a little little thinner grass, I even would recommend for a lot of golfers to putt it. But we just gotta have like a super simple kind of go-to shot. You're gonna wanna use your most lofted wedge. So for me, this is a 60 degree. And I really just try to think about finding a landing spot a couple feet on the green. That way, if you try and land it too close and you hit the fringe, you don't get that dreaded fringe bounce, which it kills all the spin and then just kind of goes away. But, you know, I really adhere to the Phil Mickelson advice here of, you know, you either got to go low or high. Like that's really with their lob wedge. You got to just choose one. So if I go high, it's off my front foot. Weight is pretty much all on my left side here. And it's just a super simple shot. I, I definitely have a little bit of a weaker grip. You know, it just, it doesn't require that much, but half of the battle for these super simple shots, it's just getting your setup right. So I'm choked up all the way. I'm not even opening the face at all. I mean, you can, but you really don't need to. Weight is forward. Again, weight forward with wedges is kind of my motto. We're going high. And, you know, Phil talks about that too, kind of the hinge and hold. I love that. And I, I think that that's just the one thing you always want to think about with your lob wedges. Are we going high or are we going low? So those are three of the high shots. The low one you probably don't want to do in this instance just because we don't have much green to work with, but you really just go back of, back foot on this one and we get more, we get weight forward again, but we get that handle ahead a little bit. So then it's lower, it's gonna release a little bit, but it's just that hinge and hold, which is just here and here. We're not trying to take a big swing. We don't have a big wide stance. It's just here, it's back foot. And I mean, these are all just tapping. So if you do take lob wedge, you have to have that simple, simple chip pitch, whatever you want to call it here. But again, we go high. Or we go low. There is no middle stance. We are just going one or the other. And that's the first golf shot everybody needs to play wicked smart golf. The good news here is that not much changes when we're in the rough. Again, it's either low or high, but what changes is the lie. Since obviously we have good lies when we're in the fringe or the light rough, we don't have to worry as much, but the lie is the biggest thing. So if it's sitting down, let's really make it down. It, you just have to realize that it's not gonna spin as much. So we gotta change our landing spot. And then it's just the same. In this example, I still will go off my front foot. I wanna get my weight forward. I wanna hit down on it. This one, I probably would have to land it on the fringe because it's gonna release a lot. It's not gonna have any spin coming from that lie. So 
yeah, you want to avoid the fringe bounce if you can, but it's such a simple shot if you just know what the lie is going to let you do. So it's not going to spin as much. Change our landing spot. Land it on the green, no problem. If it's a longer one, then of course, if we go into the other one, we can do a little bit of our back foot. But for most of these, to play this thing off your front foot, the only thing you gotta think about though, is if it's sitting up too good. Because if it's too good, you can go right underneath it. So if it's sitting up, you have to expect it to jump a little bit as I'm gonna get into in the chipping section. So it's gonna jump on you, which means it's gonna travel further, so you need a little less swing, but you don't want too much weight forward on this one. We actually kinda of want even, so that way we slightly hit up on it. And then notice, that the ball is already at the top of the club if I put the club down. So hover that thing a little bit, that way we're gonna have just a little bit better strike. So I'll just do that. Again, not as much forward, more like 50-50. Damn, that was gonna go in. So once again, figure out the lie. What's the lie gonna let me do? Okay, here's my lie. Here's the shot, front or back. Here's my landing spot and you got wicked smack. So the second shot we need is just a basic chip shot. So it's very similar to the first one. We don't need to do much. The biggest difference here is club selection. So with this, again, we wanna land it on the green. We don't wanna try and land it on the fringe just because we're gonna avoid that fringe bounce. We want it to get here, and we wanna make sure to read the, read the chip. Too many guys never do this, and then they're like, oh wow, this is right to left, or this is downhill. Like, walk this off. Spend the extra 10, 15 seconds and then get clear about our landing spot. You know, in general, you wanna, like I said, for like really short-sighted shots, you wanna get it at least here. For some of these though, I'll probably go like right here. This will be a gap wedge. That's the biggest difference though, is with a gap wedge, it's not gonna spin as much. So you're gonna be able to hit it and it's just gonna roll out. And very similar, I either go low or high. So with this one, I will go kinda, I'll do both, but I'll do high. And again, with this, weight still forward, it's a very, simple chipping motion. I mean, it just goes in sometimes like that, but I like to stand a little bit closer so that kind of raises the handle a little bit. And when you're using a gap wedge, you're gonna have a lot more forgiveness than a lob wedge. So this is really good, you know, honestly, if you can't putt it from the fringe, once again, that's always the way to go, but, so we'll go high, I raise the handle, I choke up, I mean, look how consistent that is. I mean, I'm just doing nothing. Like these are all inside like three feet. Same thing with back foot though. So back one, I'll go little handle ahead. I'll stand just a little bit closer. Like I didn't hit that good and look at how good it ended up. Like I chunked the hell out of that and I still have two feet. So that's the biggest thing is that it's just gonna improve your misses. So we'll get it, you know, I landed it too short again and look at how good that works. So I'm not trying to hit you know, some monster flop shot from here and watching all hell break loose. Like keep golf so simple. So right here again, we're going high or low. That's three bad shots in a row and there's three tap-ins. So this one's probably not as good of a example just because we don't have as much green to work with, but again, decide one or the other, high or low, and use a gap wedge. Do not use an eight iron either. That is old outdated tips that's just gonna make it impossible. When you hit an eight iron, that ball is just never gonna stop. Use a gap wedge, pitching wedge at most, and just keep it simple. I think one thing too, you notice that my follow through is really low. You know, I'm, it's very low. I'm not trying to, to get up here. We'll get into those shots in a second, but we wanna make sure again, we're just practicing this nice one, two cadence. You know, again, I didn't even hit that one good, and we got a tap in. So please always remember that if we can keep it low, it's gonna end up so much better. So I think the second shot we all have to have is that basic chip shot, gap wedge, maybe a pitching wedge, but I honestly think gap is gonna be best. Little forward press, let it roll out. Hey, before getting into the next tip, did you download my free guide, How to Become a Wedge Wizard? It's 10 pages, it's some of the best tips and tricks from my book, Wicked Smart Golf, and I know they're gonna help you with your short game and with your wedges. So download that, the link's gonna be right here or down in the description. When you do, you're gonna start playing better golf fast. So the second part of the, the basic chip and kind of bump and run here is figuring out the lie. Because how the ball is sitting will determine what shot we can play. So 
I had Colin Morikawa's mental golf coach on, uh, Dr. Rick Sessinghouse, Flow Code Academy, really good interview if you guys haven't listened to it yet. And as he said, there's no bad lies, there's just the lie. You have to figure out what you can do with it. So let's just say it's a normal lie. It's sitting up good. Basically what I'm trying to do is exactly what I just said in the uh, fairway lie. Like we're really not trying to do much different. Again, it's either front or back. For this one, since there's a little bit more room, we'll try a back one here just so we'll roll out. And the biggest thing, ooh, be good. Oof. Biggest thing here is figuring out, once again, where our landing area is. If it's sitting down, it's gonna come out with a lot of forward spin, so we're gonna wanna land it closer to here. If it's a normal lie, we can land it halfway or so. If it's a really good lie and you're hitting a flop shot, not maybe for this shot, but then you know our landing area changes. So we always have to be figuring out what is the lie gonna let me do once you know that, then you know your shot, and then you pick your landing spot. So if it's sitting up really good, you actually sometimes have to be worrisome of that as well because it's gonna pop. So when it's sitting up like that, you can tell the ball is already at the middle top of the face. So a couple things here. So one, you're gonna plan for it to pop a little bit. It's gonna jump on you, it's a jumper. And then we don't want too much weight on our front foot like normal, kinda even it out a little bit because it's sitting up so much. And I like to hover the club, because if you set the club down on the ground, you're already in the middle of it, and you're gonna hit a lot of shots fat. So if the lie is sitting up, I'm gonna hover it just a little bit, I'm gonna play for the pop. And pretty good, just landed maybe a foot, foot or two too far. But now the other situation is if the ball is really sitting down. So you can see here, this is a trash lie, it's very bare. Instead of this, we do not want to go too far off our front foot. We want to go back foot, hands ahead, still kind of crowding it a little bit, but we have to change our landing zone. We want this to be now here because the ball is just not going to get as much spin. It's going to have a lot more forward spin. So we'll get it up here, hands ahead. Ooh, that just came out way too good. Hit it a little hard. But yeah, basically ask yourself, what's the lie going to let me do? What's the shot I need? Where's my landing zone? That was pretty good. So that's what we need to be asking ourselves. If you do that on these chip shots, you're gonna hit so many more closer and you're gonna be ahead of 99% of golfers. All right, so next up we got the bunkers. Bunkers terrified me for a very long time, even as a scratch golfer plus handicap. I've definitely had some issues in the sand, mainly just from not having a good routine not having the right technique and then walking in with zero confidence also probably not practicing it nearly enough so you really only need for night i mean for almost every golfer you just need one stock shot we can get into the plugged lies and high shots and chunk and runs but honestly we just need one if, if we just have one your confidence will do so much so we got probably 15 feet or so to work with here and you just want to think, this is my stock bunker shot. So I got lob wedge, 60 degree, Vokey SM9, eight degrees of bounce. And I would just try to keep this super simple. I'm trying to plop it. This is very thick sand. When it's thick, you're not going to get nearly as much spin. So I'm trying to get this couple feet on the green and just let it release out. Wide stance, I think that's one of the biggest things, one of the biggest mistakes most people make. Club face wide open. Again, most golfers walk in here. That is not going to work unless you're in really compact sand. So we're going wide. I go about 60%. You don't want to go too far because then you get steep, but you don't want to go too much because then you hit up on it. So I go just a little bit. And the biggest thing I learned this year was from Derek Dominski, uh, amazing episode on the podcast as well, was about handles, placement. Too many guys trying to go low to hit that high shot, which it does help to an extent, but there's too much. So when I got a lesson with Derek, we actually worked on raising the handle just a little bit. And I think the other thing is where you look at. I look right there. That's where I wanted to hit it, not the golf ball. Again, this is the only shot in golf where we don't hit the ball, we hit the sand, which carries it. But I always used to look at the back of the ball, I hit a lot of shots thin. So experiment with it, see what works for you. Oh, first attempt. All right, so a couple things there. One, the divot was pretty good. The alignment was pretty good. One of the biggest mistakes I used to make was be aiming, get the feet way too open here. 
And that's like kind of a, you know, cut across it, kind of like old school. It just doesn't work. It's not needed anymore. So what we need now is to just have this basic sand shot. Again, not trying to do anything crazy, but I like to always look at that. Just be like, all right, what are we doing? I cock my wrist quickly and make sure to have speed, especially when it's this heavy of sand. You got to have speed. Oh, look at that. Didn't have enough speed, hit too far behind it, barely made it out. Still better than nothing. Also, you got to have the right expectations, guys. Remember that the PGA Tour average is only 50% from the bunkers, despite what you may see on TV. If I did that, I wouldn't even be that mad about it. I'd be like, all right, well, I got a putt. Same thing. Swinging with speed. Last thing to think about is just get in here and practice. If you're never in the bunker and you don't even know how to hit the shot and then you never even put in the work, how do you expect to have any confidence on a golf course? All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick little short game tutorial. I think the biggest thing to remember is to keep golf simple. Have these three shots in your arsenal, practice them, add in your short game routine, and watch your game improve. Stop making the short game so difficult and start using these tips so you can play wicked smart and shoot lower scores every single round. If you want even more tips to play more consistently without changing your swing, make sure to watch these two videos next.